Welcome in to the second episode of Building the Board. The Dallas Cowboys looking to add some depth at that linebacker room. They signed Eric Kendricks in free agency to add that veteran experience, right? Now they're looking on, looking to Damone Clark, a fully healthy Damone Clark, looking to make a jump in year three. And now we get DeMarvin Overshone, right? His first year back from ACL injury, his first year, his rookie season actually at that. Now we've got linebackers to break down and address. I've got Patrick Dosey Walker to come on and help me break down this position room. Now, can you just tell me a little bit about how much of there is a sense of urgency of addressing that linebacker position? It has to be the top priority mm -hmm. right up there against running back okay. and left tackle center also offensive line. But when you're talking about the linebacker situation, you're talking about the fact that they lose to Marvion Overshone before mm -hmm. he can take a single regular season snap. He showed exceptional promise in the preseason and training camp. They're going to be looking forward to getting him back. However, you're going to have to allow a little bit of grace, a little bit of time for him to get back to prime form and then get to the NFL speed as far as uh, his level of play. You lose Leighton Van Der Esch to the neck injury. You're forced to release him, and then ultimately he opts for retirement. That leaves you with Damone Clark prior to the Eric Kendricks move as being the lone true linebacker in that room. The Eric Kendricks move is going to be massive for the Cowboys, even if he's not in the all-pro level anymore. If he is a step back, that's still a Pro Bowl level who comes in and he knows Mike Zimmer's all, uh, defense. Front and back, he can help mentor Damone Clark, DeMarvion Overshone, and any other young linebacker in the room. We had a blessing to actually have Damone Clark on Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jim so I make sure to catch Shameless us on plug. Thursday. I but uh, I like but no, he mentioned how uh, he's looking forward to Eric Kendricks actually leading that room, um, just bringing that experience, right? But I mean, I've got to ask you, how big is that linebacker position when you come when it comes down to it? You know, there are some that subscribe to the narrative that linebackers <laughs> don't matter. I don't understand. I sus I suspect that you should unsubscribe to that narrative effective immediately because all you need to do is look at what the Cowboys suffered uh, over the course of 2023. Once they lost Leighton Van Der Esch, once they lost lost to Marvion Overshone, and as the season wore on, they were really exposed at that linebacker position. And Damone Clark, he showed some flashes last year. The Cowboys expect him to take a big leap, but you could see what the absence of Leighton Van Der Esch meant, not only from his level of play, but also from a mentoring standpoint. So Eric Kendricks being added to the room is going to be massive again, as I stated. Now they are still going to have to address the uh, linebacker posi position in the draft as well. There is no way that they can feel that they have uh, finished their job right there. So onward to the draft we go. Yeah, and there's a lot of talent in this linebacker draft class. For more on that, we've got Nick Harris to go ahead and break that down. Appreciate it, Nicole. Definitely the Cowboys are going to need help at the linebacker position. And similar to our first episode talking about running backs, this is also a position group that they can highlight in day two and get a guy. Let's take a look at some of those guys that might be on the board on day two. We'll start with Edron Cooper, who in my opinion is the top linebacker in this class. Out of Texas A&M, originally from South Louisiana, and he brings that dog mentality that South Louisianians typically do uh, to the football field. Let's take a look at this first play, playing against New Mexico early in the season for the Aggies. As here's Edrin Cooper right here, he's going to be able to identify these running lanes as this play develops. Now watch how patient he is as this play develops. He sticks around right here, but he's waiting for this running lane to be able to open up, and then he blitzes right through and is able to find the running back for a tackle for loss, working with another linebacker for the Aggies, Torian York, really talented freshman for the Aggies last year as well. But those two guys, they were able to bounce off each other quite a bit. Here's Edrin Cooper once again, and on this play, it's going to be a little bit different. This is what he can do in the pass game, being able to identify weapons out of the backfield. Here's what he can do. Watch as he's patient here, staying in that second level, identifying the running back. And then once he sees that swing pass go out, he just attacks him. Look at that big hit there, right at the 25 yard line, limiting the, uh, the gain on that play. He was able to do this a whole lot for the Aggies last season. Yeah, let's take one more look at this hit. Come on. Yeah. Just knocking him down and then looking over him like a bird over its prey. Big time there for Edrin Cooper last season for the Aggies. Let's take a look at another one of these guys, Junior Colson. Originally born in Haiti, he didn't move to the United States uh, until the age of nine. He was adopted by a family in Tennessee who helped to develop the game of football for him, and it ended up in a full scholarship to Michigan. So he was doing things right up until this point at least, and now he's going to take his talents to the NFL. Six foot two, 238 pounds. Let's take a look at this play from the Rose Bowl, the semifinal game against Alabama as he is coming off of this left side right here. This is Junior Colson. He's going to get identified by left tackle Caden Proctor here for Alabama, a freshman All-American for the Tide last season. You see how big he is, six foot seven Proctor is, but 
Colson's able to fight him off, fight that contact off, and still limit the game there on Jace McClellan, who's another running back option in this draft. But he's able to still take him down with Proctor dragged all over him. Not a lot of guys were able to do this to Caden Proctor last season, but Junior Colson was able to. Really talented defender there in the second level for the Michigan Wolverines last season. They won a national championship. They were doing something right on the defensive side of the ball. Junior Colson was a big part of that. Let's take another look at the Dick Buckus Award winner from last season for the nation's top linebacker, Peyton Wilson out of North Carolina State. Now, he battled a lot of injuries early on in his college career, had two ACL surgeries, a shoulder surgery, but the last two seasons there for the Wolfpack, he really developed into a big time talent and he's super versatile. Being able to play in the run game, but being able to step back into coverage as well, he has big time tendencies in both of those areas. How about this right here? 403 tackles over the course of his time in Raleigh there for North Carolina State. Let's take a look at a, at a play from Wilson from this past season. So you're going to see him. He, you're not going to see him in screen just yet. Let's wait on it. Let's wait on it. There he is right here. And he's going to attack the quarterback as he sees the quarterback trying to find a running lane to be able to pick the first down. But nah, not on Peyton Wilson's watch. He's going to come cut this off and he's going to be able to grab Plummer's ankles and drag him down from behind. Uh, the reason I wanted to highlight this play is because of his sideline to sideline ability from hash to hash, from sideline to sideline. He's going to be able to make the play. It's a big time reason why Peyton Wilson was the top linebacker in college football last season. But for the Cowboys, they have a lot of options. They can look on day two. They can look on day three. They're going to be able to add some development to that room, add some depth to that room that I think could help. I've got to ask about Edger and Cooper, though. We heard from him at the NFL Combine, and I got a chance to actually ask him, what can you bring to an NFL team? And he said, my versatility, right? He prides himself on that versatility. What are some different ways that you could use him if you are talking about this Dallas Cowboys defense if you're Mike Zimmer? Yeah, for me, it's 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 the instincts, the intellectual mind that works for Edger and Cooper so much, I, I think, at the next level. You're going to have Eric Kendricks for one year, and the expectation is that you probably only get him for one season. So if you're looking to bring in a young guy that can help develop in that first season and then take over if Kendricks were to leave the building after one year, then I think Edron Cooper is a guy that could do that. He could fill running lanes. He could step back into coverage. He does everything pretty dang well. Yeah, I love to hear it. Love to hear it. Now, Patrick, what are some other options that the Cowboys could potentially look at uh, maybe day two, day three? Well, like Nick Harris said, there are plenty of options to be had in this linebacker core from this prospect pool. I look at a guy like Tyron Hopper, Missouri. He spent his first three seasons of eligibility with the Florida Gators. Transferred to Missouri was still impactful. This is an all-SEC talent who is regularly routinely ready to prepare against NFL caliber talent because again he played in the SEC so I expect him to be a day three option for the Cowboys and also if you look at a guy like Jalen Ford hi Texas I'm still here with you on this <laughs> if you look at a guy like Jalen Ford now when you look at Tyron Hopper's abilities and the fact that he can cover exceptionally well Nick Harris talked about playing sideline to sideline Hopper is your guy if you're talking about that he 2022 QB rating when targeted 66.8 he is exceptional in coverage now, you won't necessarily get that type of sideline to sideline coverage from a guy like Jalen Ford, but what you will get is a downhill, violent, heavy hitter who can help in run support as well. And the Cowboys, as we all know, has struggled when it comes to stopping the opposing run. So if you're looking for that type of downhill linebacker, then you're definitely looking at a guy like Jalen Ford. Texas Longhorns, I mean, stand up, right? Stand yeah. up. There's a lot of Texas Longhorns talent in here in the building. Uh, but can, real fast, if you guys have a choice to pick which linebacker you want to draft, who would it be? Man, this is a tough one. Don't look at me, Patrick Walker. I, I, I think if you're looking there on day two, Edron Cooper, if he is there at 58, I think that's a guy you pull the trigger on. I mean, you don't get those type of instincts, that type of value there at 58. Granted, I don't think he will necessarily be there at 58. If that's the case, then I probably wait till round three or somewhere later in the draft to be able to take my guy. A couple of other day three options that I think could work for them. Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky, another big guy who could help stop the run. And then Jordan McGee out of Temple. You talk about instincts. He was a high school quarterback who flip to the defensive side of the ball. He takes that quarterback mind to the linebacker position, and you can see those instincts really come together for him. I think those are two day three options that could work for the boys as well. For me, I'm going right to Edron Cooper. All I right. think Edron Cooper would be the definitive pick for round two. If you're going to go linebacker uh, on the top of day two, that's who you got to get if it's, if it's for me. Now, Peyton out of North Carolina State, again, 400 plus tackles for, uh, for the Wolfpack. You cannot, you cannot argue against how 
dominant that is. However, the Cowboys are coming off of a past few seasons where they've lost a guy like Sean Lee uh, to his career for injuries. You've lost Leighton Van Der Esch just this offseason to an injury. The Cowboys really need to get not only an impact dynamic linebacker, but one who can stay on the field for longer than four or five years. Yeah, there's a little bit of an unknown in this linebacker position group, right? But a lot to look forward to, especially with a possible new position, a new addition to this position. But that's a wrap for the second episode of Building the Board. We'll see you all next time.